Hello guys and welcome back to Pam's Harvest Craft. As you can see, I have made myself a little skeleton farm. It is inside what I would call a dank and dark basement. <laughs> it's not the best thing that I've ever built. And uh, the storage system down here doesn't have very much. I think I might even change some of this up because I'm not gonna keep most of the things that I get apart from the bones and the arrows. And uh, it's just a bit rubbish really. Um, I've also noticed that when I'm killing the skeletons, because it doesn't have any fall damage, I just have to sit here and, and hit them. It's as simple as I could possibly make it. Uh, some of the XP is actually getting stuck inside the hopper there, so I might have to change the design of this. And also it's not the safest place in the world, because if I come up here, um, all I've done is made myself like a little dirt shack, basically, so that when I come out, I can see that it's nighttime, and I know that it's not a good idea to go outside. Now we can go outside. And uh, guess who else is hanging around here as well, being a complete nuisance? Not even offering me any good trades, although he does seem to have lost his llamas, which means that I might be able to keep them if I hang around for a bit. But uh, you guys can probably see what I've done here. Now this uh, little block just here marks the centre of the skeleton spawner, so actually um, I'm standing not very far away from it, and it's probably only maybe 10 blocks, maybe less than that, under the ground. I mean, if I stand here, you can even hear it, like like hear the water sloshing around and stuff in the skeletons so not really much room for a drop fall but what I do want to do eventually is build some kind of building over here um, a spooky house maybe so that it's safe for me to actually you know come in and out and maybe have like a bed to sleep in as well so that'll be not too bad but today's episode is gonna all be about Pam's harvest craft because a couple of people have been asking me in the comments and saying you know could I do go into a bit more detail about the actual mod itself and uh, I realized of course I've been playing this mod for quite a few years and I'm used to it you know like I kind of know the ins and outs but I know what's changed and kind of took it for granted that maybe other people don't know that much about the mods so what I'm doing now is we're gonna go see if we can find ourselves um, some of the different elements of the mod and, and I'll tell you what you can do with them. The main part of the mod is food core. So the mod's actually split up into three and will eventually be four mods. But at the moment, food core is probably the most important one that you need. The other mods won't work without it. And all food core does is it allows you to change um, quite a few vanilla recipes. And one of my favorite things is that you can actually make water into eight fresh water, which you can then use in recipes. And that means that you don't have to keep refilling your bucket every time you want to do something. You can actually kind of stock up and it's all stackable as well. And that can all be used in quite a few of the recipes. You can also do the same with milk and I believe I saw a cow just over here hello <laughs> you can do the same thing so if I get my bucket milk this cow and then I can stick it in there and that you get eight of those and you can just keep stacking those up and it's much easier to use in recipes I'll go into a bit more detail in a bit with that but because I can see some trees over here I thought I might talk a little bit about the tree mod now the tree mod is really interesting because uh, it has just been updated um, so if you guys have already got the mod I would suggest going back to forge and having a look at the updated versions because it's fixed a lot of bugs in the, the trees and the crops and uh, the trees as you can see will spawn in certain biomes so this one over here um, actually has two different types of fruit on it that does happen sometimes <laughs> I think that's a bug I don't think that's supposed to happen <laughs> and uh, what you can see is this this fruit here is not ripe so if I right click on it like nothing is happening because it's not ready to be picked I could if I wanted to sit here and bash away at it and what will happen is that will destroy the fruit on the tree and I will get that fruit so there we go now I have a banana but that banana will now never grow again so like this is now kind of a, not very good to really to get the fruit that way it's better to hang around and just wait and what will happen is they tend to go through kind of three stages of growth so you'll see it start to start to grow I think these over here actually might be ripe these are gooseberries uh, no, not quite. So they're on their second second stage of growth because I think they're green when they first start out. And that's usually a good way to tell if something is not ripe. It's usually kind of like a green color. Now there's not a lot of recipes that you can do with these at the moment, which is why we're waiting for the fourth mod to come out, which is food extended. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But one of the things you can do, I believe these are nuts. Oh, I'm just gonna break it for the sake of it. <laughs> there we go, got cashew. Now all the nuts I believe can be stuck in a furnace. Uh, just ignore that for a moment. <laughs> yeah, they can all be stuck in a furnace and you get a roasted nut. So that happens with all of the nuts and you can do it in a, a smoker and you can do it in a campfire as well. So you can have roasted nuts, which will give you a little bit more energy than just eating the raw food would do. Now you probably noticed that around me are these kind of unusual things that you can see on the ground. Now this is the crops mod and the crops mod gives you these little gardens. So this one, I believe 
forget what this one is. It's like a berry garden and this is like a soggy garden. So this tends to spawn near water. These tend to spawn near forests and I believe, oh yep, I can see another one over here. These are the windy gardens and they tend to spawn kind of in plains. Now it used to be that when you broke one of these, you would get three uh, crops, like three random kind of fruits or vegetables. Um, but Pam's changed that now and it, it only gives you one. But I believe that you can actually go into the, the files, the Jarson files and actually edit that so that you can have two to three. I obviously haven't done that because, you know, I've had enough trouble <laughs> with my game and I don't want to be fiddling with the Jarson files and make more trouble for myself. Uh, it used to be as well that they would spread, but uh, Pam said recently in her um, kind of files that actually like these won't spread and this is all you get. They just kind of like spawn randomly in the world and you have to go out and find them, which it kind of adds to the adventure element of it. So sometimes you get a few of them like this and sometimes you get like a nice big group like this. So if we break some of these, ooh, I actually really wanted one of those. <laughs> so strawberry, let's see what else we get. Winter squash, ooh, I believe that was a onion, very nice and a lettuce. It's really good that we got some different ones. And uh, if you have a look at the files like on um, Forge, she actually tells you like all the different things you can get. Oh, I'm being really lucky today. I'm getting loads of different ones. We're not getting any repeats. That's useful. So I'm gonna grab some of these as well. All right, what was that? Beans, very nice. Ooh, and that looks like it might be a radish. Cool, let's have a look at the soggy gardens too. Uh, Brussels sprout, very nice. I actually like Brussels sprout. Two Brussels sprouts, so not so lucky that time I got a repeat. And that looks like it might be an okra. Yeah, that is an okra. Awesome. So we now have a few things that we can plant. I thought I'd pause on the way back just to really appreciate how cool the city's looking at the moment. I can't believe like how much it's come on in just like a few episodes. Look at those beautiful smokestacks on the houses. Yay. Right, let's make some recipes, shall we? Now, uh, I was messing around earlier in the week uh, with some of the vanilla crops and there's actually quite a lot of stuff that you can make. I had to go uh, glazed carrots, which I believe is just sugar if I, because I'm using J, um, J E I, you just need to press R and it'll show you the recipe. So like just butter, um, ignore the silken tofu for a moment <laughs> and the carrot and the sugar in the, in the saucepan and that's quite a nice little meal. I've also got carrot soup if I press R. Uh, stock's pretty easy to make as well. You literally just use any kind of meat product or fish product in the game and the pot and because I have a literal metric ton of fish which is why I have 54 levels um, because I've been fishing so much. That's not even from my skeleton spawner, that is literally just from fishing. Um, I have got a lot of things like stock and I made the stew as well, which again, just used a fish and you can use any vegetables that you want and that will just make the stew. So, you, but you don't have to have um, the crops installed to do that, that will work. Now you've probably, you probably guys have noticed that a few extra things are popping up that maybe you don't have if you've installed the game. And that's because I'm on um, Pam's Patreon. So I have access to Food Extended, which is the fourth mod that she's been working on. Now the fourth mod is what really is gonna make this very interesting. So if I look up tofu, now, unfortunately, you can only get tofu from soybeans and soybeans are found in the jungle and my jungle is fairly far away. But eventually when we get ourselves some soybeans, you can make silken tofu. And if I press U, that will give me the uses. So you can make almost anything. Well, you can basically make anything that involves kind of a dairy product or a meat product. Um, in the game so you can make it completely vegan. You don't have to kill any animals ever and you can just do all of these things. You can also make firm tofu, um, which is a replacement for most meat things. And you can see you actually have to work a little bit hard to make some of the meat products. So you need to have certain crops like the spice leaf and a bit of soy sauce as well. How do you make soy sauce actually? Let's have a look. Oh, you just use the, the juicer. Okay, yeah, that, that's how you used to be able to make it in the game. It's an interesting bottle design, actually. I always think of soy sauce as being a bit more black than that, but that's okay. And uh, so you can get uh, all of the different kinds of meats. I just love the names as well, they're so funny. So I'm guessing that's one is mutton, tofu mutton. Uh, we've got tofu rabbit. We've got tofacon, the best, which you need to have maple syrup. You can see there's a little bit of a bug there. So I think I need to update mine as well. So that should fix that. Uh, we've got the tofu steak. I don't actually eat steak, so that's will be quite useful for me. Tofu chicken and the tofu fish as well, which we don't actually need because we are eating a lot of fish. <laughs> Now, the other thing you can do with all these items is you can actually turn them into seeds, which is interesting because you don't actually need to. I don't think, I think, let's just test that out actually. I think you can plant them 
without the seed. I could be wrong. It's good to experiment with these things and find out. So let's just go and destroy some wheat over here. Let's just get rid of that. And let's see if this, you used to be able to in the old mod, just literally plant it straight in the ground. And yep, you can do. So you can turn it into seeds if you want, or you can just literally whack it in the ground like that. Now, if I was to break that, I would just get the seed. So let's see. Oh, no, I don't. I get the strawberry. I was wrong. But yeah, there you go, guys. So you can literally just plant it straight in the ground. And when it's ready, you'll right click on it and you'll get the fruit. So I'm actually going to take that back because um, I want it <laughs> for something else that I'm going to do. So yeah, there you go, guys. If you have any more questions about the mod, like just let me know. And uh, as we go through, you know, I'll continue making some of the recipes. As I ran past, you guys probably noticed that the fishing farm seems to be missing. And uh, that's because I've dismantled it. Like, it's not gone completely. I actually whacked it in a chest just over here so that I can re-install it, I guess is the right word. Um, and there's, like, my OP rod in there as well. And the flowers that were outside also, because, you know, that's very important. Um, but I'm going to decide on a new place to put that, because what I actually want to put here... Now that we have all of these crops, uh, some of which, like... You know, especially some of the, the ones you can find don't, uh, would not grow in a climate like this. I'm kind of emulating the climate of my own garden and uh, certain things like tomatoes and, and even the strawberries to a certain extent need to get started off in a greenhouse. And I thought actually as the farmer, um, I probably would have a little greenhouse to grow some of these more exotic things so that I could sell them at a hiked up price <laughs> in the town. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I've marked it out with cobblestone and I'm thinking I'm going to use a lot of glass and probably some colourful concrete to make it look really good. And I'm going to add an extra feature, which I will explain to you guys what it is. Uh, and it's something I've seen on quite a lot of Victorian uh, greenhouses and you can still get them now. And I think it's going to make it look, you know, give it that element of realism. So I'm going to make dark green concrete this time. Um, so that, okay, it does give you eight. That's really interesting. Um, so we can make two more of those. Two more of eight is 16, which means I should have 24. That's probably going to be enough. And I'm also going to whack some glass in here. I've just made myself some more bricks, which is really good. Uh, but I am, because this is going to be a greenhouse, going to need a lot of this as well. Now I'm also... I think what I need to do is whack some of these in the ground because I think I've run out of spruce again. I'm using a lot of spruce. I need to like make myself a proper like spruce tree farm. But luckily I got a lot of saplings this time and wasn't an idiot <laughs> and wasted all the saplings. Not there, thank you. So let's just whack these out. So hopefully that should grow whilst I'm building. No, thank you. So I'm going to start with the base being... Uh, bricks because I think that the bricks have like a nice sort of texture to them as you can see I'm not placing them absolutely everywhere what I'm going to do um, is actually fill in with a little bit of granite as well and what I did is handily stuck everything over here so that I can just grab it when I need it rather than filling up my entire inventory <laughs> so there's that um, I actually think I need a door at this end as well so you can, as you can see it's very narrow and that's kind of the effect that I want to go for with this. I want to make it look like kind of cramped because I think most greenhouses if you have I've seen one do tend to have kind of a cramped feeling to them because people get them into like fairly small spaces so that's kind of what I want to go with here. I'm actually going to change that eventually but for now I'll put these bricks on the corners. Uh, because I have a little idea to make sure that we have enough water. Oh, I'm going to need to grab some dirt as well. This is looking a little bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> um, where I've put these blocks in the middle here, I actually am going to change these because I am going to build up from those points with my concrete so that it'll have a couple of nice arches going over the middle to kind of break up the glass because I don't have connected textures. The, gra the grass can look, uh, the grass, the glass, <laughs> the grass as well, but the glass can look a little bit not so great because obviously it's got all the lines and stuff on it. So you do need to like break it up a little bit. Good old vanilla Minecraft. I probably should get connected textures actually. That's not a bad idea. Right, let's move this crafting table and I need some dirt. That's the foundation done. I've gone for three wide and it's sort of five between each of what I would call kind of the center points. Also stuck in my favorite lighting method. <laughs> now I actually don't know how to make coarse dirt because I wanted to whack some coarse dirt in the middle so that it would look like it's been trodden on regularly. Okay, so we need gravel. That's fine, let's do that. So if we get some dirt, split that in half. I don't need loads of it. Let's just take eight. 12 and see if that's enough 
just to like whack down the middle here. I really need to put, did I put mending on this? I really need to put mending on that because uh, I use it quite often. Now, the other thing is I want to have some plants raised and some plants not. So on either side, well, I'm going to create kind of an interesting effect that you'll see in a second. Right, that is regular dirt. Sometimes you can't actually tell the difference between the regular dirt and the coarse dirt. So here's your coarse dirt. So this is going to go in the middle. And what I'm going to do... So coarse dirt in the middle. No, that's regular dirt. Gosh, we're going really well today, aren't we? <laughs> So, coarse dirt in the middle, and then let me like, just decide which side I want them on. Yeah, I want the plants to be growing on this side, so I'm going to have regular dirt here, and then some of the plants are going to be on the floor there, so that's going to be all the way along like that, so I'll finish that off in a sec. And then the other thing we're going to do is build kind of an archway. So what I'm going to do is whack these down, and then I'm going to waterlog them as I go. Yeah, there's one. Oh gosh, this is going to get rid of all my torches, isn't it? <laughs> and my flowers as well. How silly. That's fine. I can replace those um, as I go. So I'm going to have two up and then I'm going to need how many more? Uh, three, because there's three in the middle. So if we get three of these, water log. There we go. Lovely jubbly. And then I should be able to put those in like an archway over the top. So I need a bit of dirt, good old dirt scaffolding to help me out here. So this is going to go like this. It does help if you climb up, actually. And just like a nice simple archway like this in the middle. Very nice. And I'm going to do that every five blocks. So I'm going to leave like a five block gap, do another one, five block gap, do another one, so that we have those all the way along. I miscalculated how much concrete I would actually need, so I needed to go and make some more, uh, which is why the cactus is now looking a little bit sad. Uh, but I'm I'm really happy with this so far. I filled in the glass as well. Let's just have a quick look inside. Uh, I actually cut down one of the bamboos because I thought these would look pretty cute inside here because eventually these will have to move somewhere else. But I quite like having them in here, little, little bamboos. I've made it like pretty much as cramped as I possibly could. So all of these along here are like almost containing this dirt. And then these are gonna have barrels on top of them in a, in a second so that will be quite nice as well uh, and all of this mainly all of this I might get some flower pots as well actually is going to be other kind of crops that I need now what I thought we'd work on outside here and I actually need to go and get my stone cutter for this next bit I believe I left it up here so we're gonna make a whole bunch of brick stairs I will definitely need all of that I might actually need more but luckily I found an extra little bit of clay in this chest here which I didn't even know I had so let's actually take some of that with us and I can whack that in a furnace if I need it right I think I'm gonna do it on this side and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make a little thing there so that that connects and make kind of a little area here there we go very nice um, and what I'm gonna do is put like a hidden water source so if I get rid of this block here and then, oh, let me take it. Let me have it. I'm going to go inside and get that. I can't be wasting any materials. That's like the bane of my life. Uh, I actually have no idea. Oh, it must be there. I got it right. Give me. Give it to me. Oh, no, I don't have room in my inventory. <gasps> Foolish mortal. There we go. <laughs> right. So we need a hidden water source down here. I made myself a new little infinite water source that like wasn't directly underneath this building. So if we whack that there, put the dirt back here yes correct right that's back together now and then we can just stick our piece of where's it gone uh brick back in here i don't really care about that piece of dirt that's lost down there there we are and then i'm gonna plow this and i'm not too bothered about being able to see that because this is going to be kind of hidden and i actually went and picked up the acacia log because i really quite like the way that the acacia trap doors look on this now what i'm actually making is something called a cold frame and if you guys have never heard of those before, I need one more. Actually, let's just do the lot. Let's just make loads of trapdoors. I mean, why not? Why the heck not? I might end up using them for something. So a cold frame is basically used for when you have something that eventually will go outside, but needs to be kind of kept somewhere where it's like protected from the frost. And that type of plant is a strawberry. So strawberries are really good in cold frames. I also quite often see grapes in cold frames. So people who like, you know, grow grapes just in the summer months have them in here. And then uh, it, during the day you open it up so it's got access to the sunlight and at night you close it so that the frost can't get to it. So there is our lovely little cold frame. And I'm probably gonna make 
at least another one, maybe two along there so we can have some grapes and maybe something else that needs kind of that cold, that storage away from the cold. So I've got to make sure all these blocks in here are waterlogged if they're going to be farmland because obviously that's going to dry out eventually. So the idea that I had whilst I was testing out in creative was actually to hide it in here. So if I remove this block here and we need a little bit of water from our little infinite water source over here. Thank you very much. Oh, actually you can take it from the middle. Pro tip. Now, because I've put these trap doors here, that should mean that when I put the water here, yep, it stays. And then we just pop them up and that looks like a really nice base to that pillar. Now I'm gonna have to do this all the way around. I'm not gonna put water in this one because for the bottom here, I've actually hidden the water. You can see some there underneath these pillars. One of them's hidden in the corner over there. And you can see that underneath here, I've been a little bit cheeky and I've used some polished granite. So now that this is one pixel down, you still have that nice line, not of dirt, but of that polished granite. Just to make it look that little bit neater. So I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna go around and do the same to all of these. Some of them are gonna have trapdoors and water and some of them are just gonna have trapdoors just so that you can't see where the actual water is hidden. And that will give that quite a nice little effect. These ones actually are quite good because I don't have to use as many trapdoors. So I might even have enough to do all of them. Now we're getting to the finishing touches. What you can see I've done at the front here is just kind of made like, I guess like a potting station. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about these acacia trapdoors at the moment, but I think it just, you know, I need a bit of decoration for those to make them look like a table. Got cute little saplings here. I think they look quite nice actually. They look like kind of plants that are being grown. Obviously we need one of these composter things, crafting table hidden. This is a bit of a squeeze now because of the bamboo. But um, I've changed it up a little bit inside. I took down the shelves because actually I thought it was getting a little bit too cramped. And I've also decided we need somewhere to grow the cocoa beans because that's obviously something that's in demand for some of the places up there. There. I can't put one there because it means I won't be able to put a plant there and I want to stick one here as well but we're gonna have to be quick because the water's there yep Ooh, that was it good job good job me <laughs> and now we can actually have some cocoa beans growing I like the look of that a lot let's go have a look at the cold frames as well and see where we're getting with that so I managed to do you have enough bricks to do two at the side and I've kind of left this one unfinished because I'm not really sure what I want to plant. This one's going to be the strawberries and eventually I think I might have grapes somewhere actually. This one's going to be grapes and then I'll have to think of another kind of plant that perhaps might need to be started off in a cold frame. Maybe tomatoes but I'd quite like to put them in here as well. So we'll now need to do this. And I'm gonna need to collect some exotic plants because a lot of the plants I have aren't really exotic enough to warrant being put in a greenhouse. Um, so this is something that we can fill up gradually. And there's another final touch that I wanted to add. Let me just see, well, you know, I've got scaffolding right here. Let's see if we can jump up, uh, not quite high enough. Maybe if we get on the plant pot. <laughs> no, not quite high enough. Right, let's go get some scaffolding. I wanted to get up on the roof so that we could do a little bit of detailing that I quite like on these like very Victorian greenhouses. They have, same as on the roofs up there, this kind of spiky design that goes all the way along. And the thought that I had, I made myself a few lanterns, is to have this block come up like this. And then we have another one of these hanging off. And then underneath that, we put a lantern. Let's have a look and see if that looks right. Ooh, certainly interesting. I almost feel like it needs to come down one block, like that's a little bit too high, but let's have a look at what it looks like on the other side if we finish this off. There we go. Ooh. I don't know, I quite like that actually. I'll have to think about it. Maybe I should put the last two of these on the top there to make it look a little bit more complete. Let's try that actually and see if that helps. Okay, that's better actually, I like that. Um, that I'm gonna leave as it is. So there we are guys, a finished farmer's greenhouse. And that's all we've got time for, I'm afraid, guys. I got really caught up in building and ended up making my episode a little, a little tiny bit longer than normal. And also, um, my boyfriend said I couldn't watch the rest of the new series of She-Ra until I was finished, so <laughs> I'm gonna stop here for now. Um, I did want to mention though, guys, um, I got a lot done this week because I actually did my first bit of streaming on Twitch. So I'll put a link in the description and I'll, I'll show you my name up on the screen somewhere so that you can come and have a look because that might be a kind of a viable thing for the future, especially if I have to go back to work. Just looking more and more likely. Um, I also have a Twitter account, so if you guys like seeing pictures of my cat, 
and if you like uh, knowing about gardens because I'm very obsessed with my own garden then you can come and join me there and I also announce you know other creative things that I'm getting on with so I uh, hope you enjoyed guys and I'll uh, catch you in the next one